Two teams of detectives are racing to try and solve a crime. They'll be gathering information from their intelligence officers and trying to figure out the clues in order to be the first to solve the mystery in Shadows Amsterdam. Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. I'm Jana Meadows. I'm Lincoln Meadows. I'm Liam Meadows, and today we're looking at the game Shadows Amsterdam from Libelude. It's from designer Matthew Albert. It's two to eight players. And it kind of feels like a mix-up between Dixit and Codenames and Mysterium, but it's all in real time. Let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, break up into two teams and choose your intelligence officers. Give them their privacy screens and matching map cards, and then set up the districts in the play area. When everyone is ready, the two intelligence officers begin sharing intel. And in real time, the teams of detectives start racing to collect three clues. Intelligence officers can share one or two cards with their team in order to get them moving in the right direction. If they land on a clue, they mark it and keep going. And if they land on an X, they do the same. But three strikes and you're out. Once all three clues have been gathered, the first team to make it to the green check mark wins. wins. So it's got a little bit of that Dixit feel, a little bit of Mysterium, maybe some code names in there, but all in real time, which makes for a pretty exciting game. We've had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, we've played it together as a family. We also played it at our game night just recently. I think Liam actually beat me at our last game night. What was your winning strategy? Uh, I kept handing it to one person that kept getting it right. The other people were like, no, we should go there, there, there. And that one person was like, yes, there. There's a and lot of fun. Getting it right. Yeah, a lot of fun discussion that happens. Uh, the person, the intelligence officer who's giving the clues isn't supposed to talk at all, so he's supposed to just be totally silent. I don't know what the rules are on uh, silent or like on nonverbal communication. I definitely do that myself. I think Lincoln and I were on a team. Yeah. Lincoln was thinking the same things I was. I'd like hand him a purple card and he'd be like, hey, team, I think we need to go to the purple. And so when the next clue came out, I'd be like, here you go, Lincoln. <laughs> you're thinking the right things. Uh, so that's kind of fun to be able to do that. Obviously, the, when you're playing with a new group, like it's a little hard to not communicate at all because you still got to kind of explain the game. The only downside to this is I think it is have a slightly higher learning curve than code names. Uh, if you've played code names before, though, then this is a great lead into like, here's a little bit more added on top. It's a little more fun, but same kind of basic mechanics. Uh, Lincoln, tell us uh, what you thought about the artwork for the game. Uh, it looks like Good Critters. If you guys don't know what that is, then you should probably get it on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, I think it's just on retail, but Good Critters from Arcane Wonders is a fun one. has some of that same like anamorphic illustration stuff. Uh, Xander, the game says that it's for 10 years old and up. How old are you? Six. Six. How, what do you think about the game? Do you think you could play it? Did you enjoy it? Do you like it? Yeah. Do you like to be, have you ever tried to be the clue giver or just the clue getter? Just the clue getter, right? Yeah. But do you usually know, like, oh, we should go there. I figured it out. Mm, no. No? <laughs> so it might be a little bit more up there in the age range, uh, but we have had a good time playing with it. Uh, we've actually played kind of a variant where we don't do real time and we just take turns back and forth, which kind of feels more like code names and is really enjoyable in that way. I said that it's got a slightly bigger learning curve than Codenames, but one of the things that I really like about this game versus Codenames is that because it's real time, you don't have that AP stuff that happens when you're down to like, in Codenames you get down to that last clue and like the one guy knows he has to get you to guess three words on your turn or you're going to lose and he takes a half hour and you're just sitting there going, do you have a clue ready? Do you have a clue ready? This game, because of the real time, it behooves you to like play faster, even if it's not a good clue, just to get people moving and heading in one direction or the other. Um, it's pretty cool that you get 10 cards to choose from. That gives you a lot of options. If you ever have, you can't give a clue, then you can discard those cards and draw 10 more. Um, there's a lot of, couple small rules into the game, but once you learn how to play it, really a lot of fun. Uh, Tantrum House gives Shadows Amsterdam four thumbs up. Two, two, two to seven players. Eight. Two to eight. Only eight. Two to eight players. All right. Let's give it a shot. Wait, Matthew Albert. Two to seven players. Eight. Oh, gosh. Two to, two eight. to eight. Nobody oh. ever said seven. Two to eight players. Two to eight players. Two to eight. Okay, right. Two teams of detectives are racing, trying to dissolve. Trying to dissolve. Trying to dissolve. Look at how it's played. Whew, that was it. the hardest thing Good job. Ever. These are cards on yours. I, I forgot. Matthew, I was talking gonna, clearly. Then that I was, was like, good. oh, no, I said it wrong. No, you said it right. Two I, 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 I 
seven players in the world. Yeah. Oh. Go check that game out. Check out our video of Liam's top ten. Was Good Critters on there? Yeah. And number. there's good critters on there too, because we like that one. And we like it. It's number four. Okay, bye. Number four. I think the three or two. Not one.